A warm welcome to this talk, one I certainly wish I didn't uh, feel compelled to make. Turbo cancers are rapidly forming, spreading and mutating. Now, this is from uh, Mr. James uh, Royal, consultant surgeon. And it's very consistent with what we've been learning from people like Professor Angus Dalgleish, Professor of Oncology and Virology, who's been concerned about this for some time. Most doctors seem reluctant to speak out about it, but, uh, but Dr. Royal has spoken out about it. Many of my multidisciplinary team colleagues, fellow surgeons, oncologists, pathologists, radiologists and specialist nurses all acknowledge to me sudden change in patterns and dramatic increase in these incurable advanced cancers we've observed over the past two years. And we know people have been presenting at stage four when the cancer is basically untreatable. The close temporal association between the increased cancers and rollouts fulfills the gold standard Bradford Hill epidemiological criteria for causation. Enough from me. Let's listen to uh, Dr. Royal speaking directly on this. This is from the Jackie Stone conference in uh, instalment in Northern Ireland. Uh, named after Jackie Stone, who sadly a physician who sadly took her own life after severe external pressure. Over, over to Mr. Royal now. Finally, I need to talk about cancer, particularly colorectal cancers. In addition to the increase in all cause excess deaths in highly vaccinated countries since the gene based injectable rollout, there has been observed an alarming and significant increase in cancers. These cancers have been termed colloquially turbo cancers. Obviously, this is not a scientific term, but reflects the different aggressive biological nature that seems to be being observed by the public as well as clinicians. Despite recent articles claiming that the sudden growth in cancers is not new, such as the gaslighting article in the Daily Mail reporting on a baffling increase in trend in data from 1990 to 2019, there is a clear dramatic increase that occurred in 2021, shortly after the rollout. A robust study recently published from Japan, now redacted by the journal after significant pressure, showed cancer-related excess mortality in vaccinated populations. Cancers being observed are in all ages. It is my assertion, shared by many expert oncologists and clinical colleagues around the world, that the cancers we are seeing are extremely aggressive and are, are of a different biology. One study showed this dramatic increase, particularly in younger ages through 2021, 5.6% increase, 2022, 7.9% increase. I've noticed aggressive widespread recurrences in previously successfully treated bowel cancer cases that I'd considered cured. Many metastases in these cases are unusual or atypical. Middle-aged and elderly people are presenting with out-of-the-blue aggressive stage four colorectal cancer who are incurable and die within weeks or months. In many of these cases, the entire liver appears to be filled with large, round tumour masses. It is horrific to see on a weekly basis in my MDT. In my experience, it is rare for colorectal cancer to be as aggressive in elderly. Usually, sporadic cancers that are diagnosed are still operable when they present. Elderly patients rarely present with stage 4 disease, and certainly not in the way I've started seeing. Now, this presentation that Dr. Royal is brilliantly giving is really designed for healthcare professionals. So I'll just sort of unpack it a little bit. He talks about the gene based rollout, where, of course, he's talking about the COVID vaccines, which are based on genetic information. Turbo cancer, as he points out, is not a medical term, but these are extremely aggressive, rapidly developing cancers that he's seeing more of. Clearly a dramatic increase in these in 2021. In young people in 2021, there was a 5.6 percent increase in these want of a better term, turbo cancers, in 2022, a 7.9% increase, more than would be expected. So backing this up with real figures. And he's also seeing unusual metastases. So you probably know that a cancer originates at a particular site, the primary site, but then it spreads. Uh, the metastatic sites are the sites to where it is spread to other parts of the body. And it, very often, for example, the colorectal cancers in the colon and, and the rectum in the lower part of the bowel, these metastasize to the liver and is seeing incurable large brown liver masses. And these people are presenting just too late to do anything about it. By the time it's metastasized to the liver, the cancer is not only in the colon, it's also filled the liver up with uh, 
tumour spread completely inoperable and rapidly terminal situation is what he's seeing. Uh, back to Mr Royal now. Recently we've seen three patients presenting with synchronous cancers, that is two separate bowel cancers in different areas of the colon presenting at the same time. This was previously considered rare, less than 3%. One, of, one was middle-aged, otherwise fit and well, with two bulky locally invasive cancers, and one was very elderly with two primary cancers and liver metastases. Many of my multidisciplinary team colleagues, fellow surgeons, oncologists, pathologists, radiologists, and specialist nurses, have all acknowledged to me the sudden change in patterns and dramatic increase in these aggressive incurable advanced cancers that we've observed in these past two years. However, none of them can offer an explanation. Various theories have been suggested. Number one, inherited or genetic cancer. There is an ever increasing focus on genetics and cancer. Many of these post-2021 20, cancers, unsurprisingly, are, are expressing particular mutations. Despite this, after further analysis at the Regional Genetics Unit, the majority are not found to have any known inherited gene mutations. Aggressive tumour biology will express more mutations. It does not necessarily mean the mutations have caused the cancer. Cancers are also more likely to develop if someone's immune system is damaged or suppressed, as tumour surveillance mechanisms are impaired. Indeed, a recent published study suggests mechanisms of oncogenesis and autoimmunity as a result of mRNA COVID-19 vaccination. Lynch syndrome, HMPCC, hereditary non-polyposis colon cancer, is suggested to cause an estimated mere 3% of colorectal cancer in all ages and 8% among the young. So what then is causing the sudden increased incidence in the other 92% that we're seeing? Number two, Western ultra-processed diet, obesity, and sedentary lifestyles. Whilst these things have undoubtedly played a major role in the steady increase in cancer over the past three to four decades, they do not explain the post-2021 sudden increase and change in biology, aggressive nature. This post-2021 increase cannot be explained by a sudden population-wide change in environmental toxins. Ultra-processed foods are not new. We already had an obesity epidemic prior to COVID-19. Number three, lockdowns causing delayed diagnosis and suspended cancer screening programs. The post-2021 surge in aggressive cancers in all ages cannot be blamed on lockdown and delayed diagnosis. As I showed earlier, during the, the COVID-19 pandemic, we did not stop our two-week wait for colorectal pathways. We diagnosed and treated more rather than fewer cancers during lockdown as the only pathway that GPs could access. Therefore, this argument of staged migration or missed or, di or delayed diagnosis does not hold true for colorectal cancer. Furthermore, colorectal screening services were only stopped for a few months of the first and second wave. In any case, there is no valid argument that the increase is due to stopping screening, given we are seeing a particular increase in cancers in much younger people, 20 to 45 years of age. Screening services for colorectal cancer and breast and others typically start at 60 years. Number four, there's a close temporal association of the increase in cancers and the rollout of population-wide mRNA COVID-19 genetic injections. The evident correlation fulfills the majority of the nine Bradford Hill epidemiological criteria for causation. There are multiple plausible mechanisms that have been proposed by which cancer could be induced or potentiated, accelerated by the mRNA gene injections, including unacceptably high levels of bacterial plasmid contamination, the discovery of the SV40 tumor promoter, disruption of the P53 tumor suppressor, etc. These mechanisms are discussed widely by scientists and clinicians, such as Dr. Kevin McKernan, Professor Angus Doug Douglas, Dr. William Mackis, and Dr. W Ryan Cole, a US pathologist, and many others, and have been discussed on numerous international calls. More generally, the shots are clearly causing generalized immunosuppression. The immune system is grossly underestimated in its complexity and importance in tumor surveillance in destroying mutated cells before they become cancers. Recently, other doctors have told me how they are seeing sudden recurrences of cancers that have been cured 10 or even 15 years earlier. I submitted over 20 yellow cards from June 2021. I could have submitted many more, but it was becoming very apparent that the MHRA was ignoring the data. I've never been given any feedback on any analysis of my cases or even acknowledgement, except for two or three cases where further clarifying information that I'd already provided was requested. I was given no information back from the MHRA to indicate that they were looking at yellow card data or analyzing it. Despite this, 
the safety signal from both the MHRA and the VAERS system in the United States is unprecedented and undeniably obvious. Presenting this information formally, I've mi received mixed responses. More recently, in my more departmental morbidity and mortality meetings, there has been a more open acknowledgement that perhaps some observed events, such as ischemic bowel cases, may have been related to the vaccines. I've had a number of conversations with two colorectal colleagues in other areas of the country who have had similar ex shared experiences and are in agreement that with the observed patterns of thrombotic, infective and inflammatory and malignant disease. I've had the opportunity to give a presentation to an international surgical meeting in London in March 2023. At the end, I was congratulated on my perceived courage in standing up and speaking about these concerns. There was general agreement in the room, 30 or more surgeons. Many offered acknowledgement and similar observations, but had been unwilling to raise their concerns for fear of repercussions. In fact, a rather alarmed eminent retired surgeon present stated, it was our duty to raise these concerns. In conclusion, the data are clear that COVID-19 vaccines are neither effective or safe. My own personal observations have been increasingly backed up by other data around the world and research studies, as well as expert opinion in other centres. I personally demand that these injections and any pr promotion of them be stopped with immediate effect. Thank you for your attention. So synchronous cancers are rare where a person gets cancer in two parts of the body at the same time, uncommon. People do sometimes get a cancer in one part of the body, then a cancer in another part of the body years later, but unusual to be synchronous. Multidisciplinary team are also seeing more aggressive advanced cancers, he's saying. Now, can this be explained away by genetics? No, because genetics has been there all the time. This is, this is an aggressive tumour biology, and the aggressive tumour biology is going to cause more mutations rather than the uh, genetic mutation which is causing the cancer. So the increased number of mutations that are being seen by the pathologists in these cancers are a result of the very active cancer which is generating its own mutations. Immunosuppression is a mechanism. So basically people can be getting cancer all the time, but the immune system damps it down and stops us from getting it. So maybe we get malignant cells, potential malignant cells or mutations in cells happening all the time. But before it develops into a cancer, the immune system eradicates it. If you suppress the immune system, that's not going to happen. But he also talks about vaccine oncogenesis as well, where the vaccines are, he believes are actually causing tumours and the autoimmunity is well recognised. Now, the example he gave there is quite interesting. It's something that we do uh, see. Um, it's uh, HNPPC, uh, hereditary non-polyposis colon cancer. So very often colon cancer begins as polyps. This is a different type. It's normally genetic. Uh, that's why it can occur in young people. Um, we do see this. It accounts for a minority of cancers uh, normally, but plus 92% he seems to be saying there. It's not the ultra processed foods and the lifestyle because that was rubbish before the vaccine rollout and it's still rubbish now. Although it is getting gradually worse, but it's not enough to account for the sudden dramatic increases. Remember, in young people, uh, increase of 5.6% in 2021 and 7.9% in 2022. These are huge uh, rises and, and so many of you know people that are affected. Um, I get so many people reporting this to me. It's it's. it's it's not nice it's horrible horrible completely horrible uh it's the, the the increase in cancer deaths and cases are not caused by delayed diagnosis because in the uk for example we start screen screening for colon cancer with occult blood uh, fecal occult blood tests at 60 i think it is but these cancers are occurring in 20 to 45 year olds and there's a clear temporal correlation with the injections, which is part of the Bradford Hill criteria. And there's also multiple plausible mechanisms, which is another part of the Bradford Hill criteria. So we've got the correlation, but we've got reasons why this could be happening. So we've got uh, P53 tumour suppressor is inhibited. So P53 normally inhibits tumours, but if that's inhibited, if the P53 is, is inhibited, then you've got nothing left to inhibit the tumours and you get more tumours. Uh, we know about the plasmid uh, DNA contamination that we've talked about many times. And we've also talked about the SV40, the simian virus 40 tumour promoter. Also seeing, completely consistent with what Professor Dalgleish has been telling us, recurrence of uh, cancers that have been in abeyance for years, 
Uh, Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency doesn't seem to be interacting with this in a meaningful way. And the other thing about the Bradford Hill criteria is the data from the Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System in the United States and the Yellow Card System in the United Kingdom are consistent. What's the odds of this both happening in the same country at the same two, two, two countries at the same time, the United States and the United Kingdom? And indeed, all of the countries where this rollout occurred. And that's really concerning. It was a meeting with 30 of the surgeons present and they were reluctant to speak out. Um, We need more people to talk about this. And of course, we thank uh, uh, Dr. Royal and salute his, his great courage in speaking out on this. And when our senior professors and senior consultant surgeons are raising these concerns, how can the regulators possibly carry on? ignoring these concerns let me know what you think we'll leave it there for now i might do another video where we do his full talk where he talks about extra pathologies that have been seen as well but that was the one on cancers and it is remarkably concerning i've had three of these injections before i realized they were doing more harm than good quite angry really we weren't given the full information I didn't give informed consent because I wasn't given the full information. I think it's a scandal. And of course, I join him in calling for a complete monitorium on mRNA vaccines until we have completely definitive uh, data. But with the regulatory agencies we've currently got, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. There could be a change in the United States soon. Let's hope for the best. But for now... It's, it's a bit of a, you know, it is a concern. You know, I know so many people that have had these um, these genetic preparations, and now it appears increased risk for these aggressive tumor biology pathologies. Journals need to get their act together. We need to get the data out on this and get it into the public domain, not just through the odd courageous individual. We'll leave it there before I get too cross. Thank you for watching.